Hi everyone, I'm Bobby Figueroa and this is ComSci 207. I will be one of your teachers in this course and uh, we will be teaching you all about web programming and web development. This is your first video which contains information about the course and some of the expectations that we have from you. Um, I'm one of the assistant professors of the Faculty of Information Communication Studies in UP Open University and uh, joining me is a colleague and a former student. His name is Mikael Diaz de Rivera, and uh, I'll be giving some time for him to introduce himself so that you'll be well acquainted with him and his future lectures. So Mika, take it away. Hi, my name is Mikael Andre Diaz de Rivera. Friends call me Mika for short. I am currently the UX or the User Experience Supervisor for OLX Philippines, formerly known as sulit.com.ph. And before transitioning into the position that I am in right now, I actually did a lot of development, web development to be exact. So that meant that I did a lot of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, and all those things that pertain to the web. I'll be one of your tutors for ComSite 207, and I really hope that you get to learn a lot from this course as much as we'd enjoy teaching this to you. So see you soon. Okay, so let's start with the outline. This video presentation will be tackling what this course is all about, our expectations, our objectives in teaching the course, the outline of the course, the topics that you'll be learning, uh, some refresher courses that you might want to take, the project and uh, assignment, computation of grades, and finally, a short word about honor and excellence. So what is this course about? This course is about learning and applying concepts that would enable you to design and develop websites that are dynamic, responsive, and database driven. So what do you mean by dynamic, responsive, and database driven? Let's try to qualify each of these adjectives. What is a static website first? A static website is a read-only website wherein readers will not be able to interact with the content. It's similar to a brochure where you just read the content and you don't need to do anything. The web pages are updated manually by the webmaster and uh, usually it's just made using CSS and HTML. A dynamic website, on the other hand, is created on the fly either partially or fully. It makes use of scripting such as JavaScript which is a, a client-side script and PHP, JSP, ASP, Ruby, CGI, and Python which are server-side scripts. Well right now I think JavaScript can be a server-side script already but it's mostly used for client-side scripting and dynamic websites are interactive where users can interact or do something about the content and the content will adapt based on the input of the user or it will respond to the input of the user. What about database driven? So a non-database driven website is a website where the content is either hard-coded or stored in the same files containing the script for creating the website or for creating the web pages. So usually the content is already there in the pages as compared to the database driven websites where content is partially or fully stored in the database and uh, the script that's being used by the web page or the website fetches data from the database and also stores data to the database based on the information that is provided by the user. So finally we define a responsive website. Before that let's qualify what a non-responsive website is. It's a website that does not adjust with the screen size of the client. An example is uh, the apple.com website. So as you can see, this is the Apple website. It's a nice website. However, 
it's not responsive. Why did I say that? Because it doesn't adjust when you try to change the size of your browser. So, okay, so when you try to view it using a cell phone, it will not adjust. How about responsive websites? A responsive website is a website that responds to the screen size of the client and automatically adjusts the elements of the website so that it can still be easily readable by the user. So here's an example of a responsive website. It's UPOU's MOOC portal called Model. So let's try viewing it. All right, so this is Model. And uh, if you scroll down, then the other content, the other texts and elements will be viewed. And if you try to change the screen size, it will automatically adjust. As you can see, the font does not really get smaller. You can still read them. However, the elements are changed so that you will be able to still see everything clearly. And as you can see, even the menu was collapsed, and you can still, you know, access the menu items like so. So this will be how the website will look like when you try to use your phone to view it. So let's try to expand it again. There you go. That's a responsive website. So our goal is for you to learn how to create dynamic database-driven, and responsive websites. Before that, what are we expecting? We are expecting that you are independent learners, that you will uphold UP's motto, which is honor and excellence. I said is because honor and excellence cannot just go alone. It should be together it's treated as one. There will be no honor without excellence and vice versa. You should also be self-motivated and self-driven learners. You should be social learners. You can learn from each other, learn from other people, and you should know basic HTML and CSS. Lastly, you should know basic programming. So if you could not fulfill number five and number six, then we suggest that you take these refresher courses from code.org and Codecademy. They have nice courses for you so that uh, you will be prepared to take this course. I have even created a, a bonus activity for you so that you will have merit or you will have motivation to do those refresher courses. These are other online references that you might want to visit. Some of them will be used from time to time in some of our lectures. Uh, the following starts with HTML dog, site point, JavaScript from null, and W3 schools. So here's the outline of our course. The first topic will be about the structure of websites, which is HTML. The second one will be the look will be tackling with look and feel or the design of the website, which is represented by CSS or cascading style sheets. The third topic will be about uh, front end frameworks or presentation layer frameworks. We'll be uh, particularly dealing with responsive frameworks like uh, Bootstrap. We will be talking about client-side scripting, which is particularly JavaScript, and we'll have a basic SQL. We'll be using the database management system called MySQL. And uh, the sixth topic is server-side scripting, particularly PHP. And finally, we'll be talking about some back-end or application layer frameworks. So here are the activities that will guide us in how to measure or assess how much you've learned from this course. So the first assignment will be about structure and look and feel. So 
uh, you'll be developing a website with just HTML and CSS but to make sure that you're the one who did it you'll have to have uh, the URL of your screencast which is in YouTube of how you did the website's structure and the look and feel. The second assignment will be about uh, client-side scripting and uh, the front-end or presentation layer frameworks, which is Bootstrap. So we also need a screencast for that to validate uh, that you're the one who did it. The third one will be about basic SQL. We'll be using phpMyAdmin. The fourth one will be about server-side scripting and back-end or application layer frameworks. So these four assignments are actually connected because they will lead up to your project. So assignment one, two, three, and four are actually components of your project. So once you finish all four, then you're basically finished with your project. I think the only thing that will be lacking is your tutorial video for the target users and your reflection paper, which we'll be talking about in your project specifications video. You will also have one exam, which is a paper-based exam the, during the midterms, and the coverage will be from assignment one to assignment two, which is from HTML to JavaScript. All right, so here's how we will give your grade. Your first assignment is worth 10 points or 10% of your grade. The second assignment is worth 10 points again. The third is 10 points and the fourth is 10 points. So all of your assignments uh, put together will be 40 points or 40% of your grade. The midterm exam is worth 30 points or is 30% of your grade and your final project will comprise 30% of your final grade. Uh, we will just use the same grading scale. It's in your course guide, so just check it out. I will not be honoring late assignments unless there's a valid excuse, so you should attach valid document when you write me a letter about why you passed an assignment late. So it'll be marked zero if you're not able to submit it on time. And in terms of academic integrity, when we catch you cheating, when you copied a source code of someone else and we discovered it, and believe me, we will be able to discover it, the first offense will, will, will cause you to get a grade of, of zero, and the second offense will cause you to have a final grade of five. So I hope that's clear. And I'm actually confident that none of you will be doing this anyway. I just need to remind everyone about this. So I want to welcome you to this course and with that I want to end with this nice quote from Chief Seattle. He said, man does not weave this web of life. He is merely a strand of it. Whatever he does to the web, he does to himself. So be careful in what you post or in what you do in the web. Make sure it will be something that will contribute to the improvement of our society. See you again next time. Bye.